feel. Um, and this is for the, for, for the audience. Can you compare the, the talent of the Dallas uh, music scene, just the talent, to other cities that you've been to? How would you, how would you rank it on a scale of one to five? Little, little Mike, what you guys say? The inside of the inside voice. Little this Mike. Another guy that should be on this panel. All right, go, go ahead. It's been across the, the whole world. Uh, the whole world. Yeah, I think, uh, okay, not the whole world, that's stupid. But definitely, well, definitely the US, I think like Dallas and maybe like New Orleans, and like a lot of the southern region. But specifically Dallas is definitely one of the uh, most talented cities I've seen. Just cause like everybody that lives here, a lot of people are from here, so they're affected by y'all and, and like you got the funky knuckles and you got all these OG dudes has been here from Bernard Wright. OG? Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I was talking about, I was talking it about the first one. I was, I was referring to like Bernard Wright. I was just starting with Bernard oh, Wright. Oh, 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 I mean, Wright you're like, you're pre-OG, don't get it wrong. Like, y'all are so old. But y'all are newer than Bernard Wright. But then you got, but then, but then you have the, the, the generation. Me, OG, don't get me. That's what Rouse likes to say. Rest better like But the generation after after Bernard and after Monaco and after y'all and after Caleb and then after after us, it's, it's, it's a lot of people that are affected by just Dallas in general versus like people in New York, people in LA. Nobody's from there a lot Come of the time. On, so like everybody Ooh, that's woo! Yeah. That thing just touched. Yeah, y'all obviously know what I'm saying. So, yeah, right. so, so um, in comparison, we agree that we agree that we have a lot. You know, we agree that we have a lot of talent. That's little Mike Mitchell, who's touring the world with Stanley Clark and doing all that different stuff. He's Stanley's drummer, among other people, and yeah, produced his own album. Uh, he's the the youngest of the youngest brothers. And it's interesting that someone who it's interesting the perspective that people have on the scene who have traveled. When you travel, and these guys have traveled the world, and do you all still live here? Yes, yeah. I live in Minnesota. Why? Because it's cheap. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm, being, I'm, being, I'm being real. You just, so I'm saying for people, I'm trying to make the connection between the scene. You have people who are on the scene, people who are contributing to the scene, and people who are travel all over the world who have, have, have tried their hand. I remember going to, who have tried their hand and gone to school, new school, and have gone to school. I other went to school, don't get it twisted. You did, right. I went to school. Right. And I caught my ass right back after I got to So, and I'm saying that to say that people, there generally, there seems to be a consensus of people who complain about the music scene or aspects of the music scene, and sometimes those people ain't never been nowhere. And it's interesting to see the dichotomy of people who have traveled, who have done things, who have had record deals, who have been signed, who have been, who are working artists, and their artistry allows them to have a different outlook on uh, the music industry or the entertainment industry, and they seem to be right here, um, contributing to the scene. And so, when you have this many, many Grammy winners on the stage at one time uh, for a free event just talking, I would say that the music scene is okay. Or saying, it has the potential to be okay. And Michael was saying, he was getting to the point that, you know, looking at the generation, I know we have some gaps, but right. in his generation, if you look at the regions, like, ain't a, ain't a lot of people doing it like them. Right. Or the Funky Knuckles, or the, the Snarky Puppies, or reaching people, because it came from what? All right. But this is what I want to say to everybody that thinks, I mean, when, you, when you say the Dallas scene, the Dallas scene has influenced the whole world right now in, in the music industry. Because I'm going to tell you why. I'm just going, I'm, I'm a very modest guy, but tonight, just because we in Dallas and everybody from here, I just want to kind of just give the connection. Let's, let's start with gospel music. Number one gospel artist in the world is who? Frank. Yeah, he's from Dallas, but he's from Dallas, Fort Worth, but the people that have, the people who put him where, the foundation where he is, comes from the Dallas scene. Come from Dallas scene, Bobby Sparks, Jerome Harmon. Come on, man. All right, cool. Let's go to, let's go to, let's go to the jazz world. 
top of the jazz world from the the late 80s throughout 2000 was who? Warhol Grove. He's from Dallas. Dallas, okay, I'm, I'm gonna get real deep because the biggest influence on one of the biggest soul, neo soul records is from Dallas. Who did the biggest neo soul record in the 90s? Erica, who did the second biggest? He not from Dallas. Who was it? D'Angelo. Who played trumpet on D'Angelo's record? Dallas. Dallas, Texas, okay? Oak Cliff. Oak Cliff. We still in hip hop, right? Let's move to 2015, 16. Biggest record in hip hop this year was who? Kendrick Lamar. Who produced half of that record? Dallas. The guy that produced half that record is one of our really good friends. His name is Terrence Martin. Let me show you the correlation. All we have to do is embrace what we have and bring for you. and really, about really brand. support. Not, I don't mean from the standpoint of working together. I mean like buy records, buy each other records. I bought three of this dude's records. Buy each other's records and really buy in because you can, we got to live by examples because people come here to enjoy us and we take for granted what's here. But I remember we would have arguments on the road with us and the Philly guys. And we would always go back and forth and talk about this whole soul thing because D'Angelo D'Angelo was from Richmond and then we were on the road with Erica and then you had Jill Scott coming up. And so there would always be this argument about where did Neo Soul start? Right there. Right I, I want you, I really want you I all to. I didn't get to that. I'm not, I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not being. I really want you to know the magnitude. There's something about hearing on and on, and hearing Erica Badu and getting the seeing what music was doing at the time. But when you put on the record, come on, church, and you heard Rim Shot, yes, and you knew that no, nothing else sounded like that. Yes. Nobody else started a record. Boom, doom. And you were like, what? And what I mean by that is, this guy was doing that type of music. It's kind of like when you look at Motown and you realize that Stevie Wonder and them were fighting and doing Sign Seal Delivered and then his first solo album was Music of My Mind. You go, what the hell was he smoking? Because there was a, such a, a, an amazing change from the Motown formula to what they were really writing in the back rooms of Motown. Okay? What people thought was soul music changed and it happened in Oak Cliff and it happened in Dallas and we just own something y'all yeah. we own something different Hope Dallas Fort Worth the surrounding suburb it's it's we're on something else when you listen to a Donnie Hathaway album and you hear Cornell Dupree and they start talking about he from Fort Worth Texas yeah on those albums so it's it's always been there but the purpose of this is to embrace it and to kind of shed light so that when you leave and you hear Dallas artists I told these guys 15 years, 17 years ago, I moved back to Dallas. We were outside a little place in South Dallas called Calidus. Sput was having a birthday party. And I looked at them and said to them, what are we gonna do, y'all? We need to make some music. And I said to them then, do not look for the scene. We're it. <laughs> 